sound speeds. And if you're starting a podcast or a gaming YouTube or Twitch channel, then you're probably interested in getting yourself a microphone. And if you search online, many websites recommend a one-stop shop like a USB microphone, even though you run into professionals like me that recommend under no circumstances going that route. So what are your options? I mean, most people are on a budget. And if you are, then what can you do? You don't want to spin an arm and a leg just in case things don't work out but then you want it to sound good too. Well, in this video, I'm gonna go on Amazon, get the cheapest microphone and the cheapest way to get that sound into your computer, and we're gonna see if we can get good sound. I'm gonna start by searching for something called a USB audio interface. That allows me to plug my microphone directly up to my computer. And then I'm going to sort by price, lowest to highest. I'm gonna scroll through the list and find whatever the lowest price audio interface I can possibly find. This little adapter seems to do the trick. Now, as long as this adapter has two things, I'll be happy. Number one is a place to plug my microphone in, and it does. And number two, does it allow power to pass from the USB into the microphone? Yes, indeed. So I'm going to go ahead and buy that. Now, secondly, I'm going to buy a microphone. I'm going to search for microphone and then again, sort by price lowest to highest. Scrolling down the list, we're going to see what we have as our options. Now, okay, there's a good promising one, but $4.99 seems to be our winner. Oh, but wait a second. This is a VOIP microphone. That's why it has installation for $199. We're not going to go that route. Let's go for the $5.84 Pile Pro. Okay, that seems to do the trick. Let's buy that one. I also need to spend a couple of dollars on an adapter to get my microphone cable into my USB audio interface. This one should do the trick. So the package has arrived now, and I can't wait to get into this thing. I mean, it's lighter, in all honesty, than many of the microphones I own. So why don't we just go ahead and tear it open and verify that it's intact. Oh, geez, this thing is small. Here is the pile microphone. Here is the adapter to get that into the USB interface. Oh, this is not going to be good. So let's start by opening up our $5 microphone. Now, online, it said nothing about an adapter. So we're just going to basically tear this thing open and see what is inside. Here is the microphone. Oh, wow, it's a USB. Okay, well, that's better than I was expecting. Jeez, this thing is light. Okay, so now I have to get it from here. That's plastic. Man, this thing is cheap. Okay, so I have to get this into my computer. Here's the adapter that's going to help us do that or I should say adaptor because it is spelled wrong on the packaging. And we're gonna just basically tear open this packaging and get straight into the adaptor and see how well this fits on the end of our microphone. Okay, that's a good start. Most of the time these blister packs are annoying to get into, but not the cheap ones. I mean, they practically fall apart on you. So that way they can maybe trade it out with an ch even cheaper component. Okay, there we go. Now let's marry these things together. Headphones, microphone. I'm going to plug the microphone into, oh, that's loose. All right, I'm going to tape that. Now, our microphone is luckily capable of going into dynamic mode if I switch it to off or cardioid pattern if I switch it to on. Maybe this is dynamic and condenser. I have no idea. And for inquiring minds, if you're curious, this plastic microphone has on the inside, whew, this thing looks cheap. I guess, man, haven't seen one that cheap in a long time. This is going to be a lot of fun, won't it? This is our entire system. Microphone into cable into USB audio interface. So let's plug this into my computer, boot it up, and see what we can record. Can't get it to work. Oh, did that work? Hello? Jeez. Okay, so there's an extreme delay. There is no kind of... Oh, man. This is terrible. All right, so if I let it go... So there's a short in the cable. So I'm having to squeeze the end right where it plugs into the USB audio interface. And the delay you're seeing my mouth is something I'm actually have to live with. It's not a zero latency delay or a zero latency monitoring. Jeez, this thing is throwing me off. But I'm pinching the connector down there to make sure that it actually makes a connection at all. Because if I let it go, then it doesn't do anything and you're hearing me from the camera there. So what I'm doing is I'm taping the connector upon itself. That way, hopefully, it's able to make a pretty decent connection as long as I don't fiddle with it anymore. And if not, 
well, I'll have to keep on messing with it until I can make a good connection out of it. Now, the cable of the microphone is now plugged into and cooperating currently with the USB audio interface. And so let's see what we can do in the DAW of my choosing, which in this case is going to be Audacity. It is a free program you can download, and it basically gives you a pretty powerful editing suite that you can use to edit audio with. So if I hit record, let's see what kind of audio it is generating. It doesn't look like it's generating much of anything. And I can tell why. It's in the wrong settings. It's for some reason recording in 32-bit float. So let me actually set this up. Listening on my headphones is going to drive me completely crazy, so I'm not going to do that. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go to the settings inside of my computer, look at my audio settings, and verify that it is set to 16-bit 48, which is correct. And I'm going to make sure that matches inside of my DAW here. I'm going to go ahead and delete this track and start a new one. And with the settings I just got through putting in there, it should be recording now at 48K and 16-bit PCM, pulse code modulation. So I'm recording my volume, my voice, whatever, in real time as you're hearing it. So why don't I go ahead and say something that we're actually going to record with and hopefully edit with. First, very important though, I'm going to go completely quiet and let this computer hear the background noise, whether digital or environmental. Now, you'll understand why I'm doing that in a minute, but just to give you the gist of it, the computer has to learn what the background noise sounds like in order to remove it. But in all honesty, the more it has to remove, the less the quality is going to be. And being that this is the cheapest stuff you can possibly buy, the quality is not anything to write home about. But let me go ahead and produce a little audio snippet just like you would if you were going to be using this particular setup for audio recording for a podcast or for your Twitch or YouTube channel. Um, and also, I do want to point out also, I didn't have the money to buy a pop screen. So this thing didn't really have one. And if I talk directly into it and say any B's or P's, I'm going to be blowing this thing out. So instead, what I'm doing is I'm going to be pointing it a little bit off axis to my mouth. I'm right now pointed right towards you, and instead of it being directly in front of me, I'm going to be speaking a little bit to the side. So maybe 30 to 45 degrees kind of off axis and directly at my mouth is going to eliminate the need for a pop filter. All my breath is going to be going this direction, and the microphone is picking up still pointed directly at my mouth. So you may be wondering, why don't you just come in from the side like this and record your audio? Well, the reason why is because, believe it or not, your head stops background noise. If you are pointed at it, your mouth produces the sound, and it also comes from your chest and your, and your head, just so you know. But right here, directly at my mouth, my head is stopping the microphone from hearing what is behind me. But if I come from the side, the microphone is going to be picking up the world to my side. And that's not going to be ideal. What you'd rather have is the microphone right here, slightly off axis, directly at my mouth, and you don't even need a pop filter at this point. My name is Alan, and welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you by this microphone, this USB audio interface, and this connector. All in all, not even $20 spent. I don't know what the quality is going to be, but we're going to be seeing how well it does inside of my DAW. I'm not going to make you have to endure listening to me through that microphone for this entire episode, but I wanted you to at least hear what I was dealing with for that voiceover. Now, I am currently sitting in Audacity as my DAW, and I'm not overly familiar with Audacity, just so you know. Full disclosure, I don't really know it a whole lot. I mean, I know basically to go to the menu up here and how to do basic features, but I'm not overly proficient in it. So I'm going to be kind of going through this and kind of stumbling my way through it parts. So expect me to fast forward a little bit here and there just to make it a little more streamlined than it would be if I were just trying to figure the thing out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save the audio you just heard me record in my DAW as a 24-bit 48K audio file. That way I can actually open it up and monitor the output of this and make the recording and everything for this episode be a lot more streamlined. So there we have it bypass all that and hopefully it's saved. I closed it to open Audacity and I went to import in the audio file I just saved. And it's asking me, do I want to make a copy of the files before editing or read the files directly from the original uh, file? And I'm going to actually make a copy of it so that way I'm not destroying the file I just got through saving 
in order to do any editing upon it. To start off, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to where it says the name of my audio file. I'm going to drop this down and turn the waveform into a decibel waveform. That way I can at least see what I'm dealing with here in a decent looking audio level. That way it's not this whole, what is this, one up here and zero down here. I guess that's voltage. I mean, I don't really honestly know. But in decibels, I can at least see what levels I'm dealing with here. And I'm going to now go in and find that silence you heard me messing with. That is extremely noisy. Oh, man. That's my background audio level. So sad as it is, that is my noise floor. Okay, here's something to keep in mind about noise floor. The louder the noise is, the more you really don't have the leverage to deal with the sound that's going to be recorded on top of it. That noise floor is basically the quietest my room could ever be, my recording environment could ever be. If I record a sound this, and go quiet, that is my noise floor, the quietest that room and environment will ever be. And if I completely digitally remove all of that, you're going to hear a lot of the artifacts and stuff that were part of the recording to be removed with it. But one of the things you're also going to be losing is a lot of my voice characteristics that were there when I did the recording. So that's not good. But what I am going to have to do is dial in on a quiet place here. Let's listen to it and see how it is. Well, ah, oh, geez, come on, Audacity. Work with me, not against me. Okay, that's my noise floor. So I'm going to go up here to effect and I'm going to first go to noise reduction, get noise profile. And now it's analyzed that. And now if I go over here to the same exact thing, noise reduction, I'm going to use the standard settings and hit OK. That's scary in all honesty, but it seems to have done a hopefully good job. OK, there it goes. I mean, it's basically reduced everything. But what I did do is that I did that for a test because what, I gotta, what I'm going to do is double click on the entire file and highlight the entire thing. And now if I go up here to noise reduction and do the apply of step two, then it should remove that noise from the entire file. It's applying the noise reduction. Let's see how it goes because it should remove that and all of this and this and anything that matches that profile in my sound. How is this going to be? My name is Alan and welcome to this voiceover. Whew. Okay. So I think right over here was when is my voiceover actually worked out fairly decently. I'm going to listen to it and see. Is it going to do a good job? Is it not going to do it? My name is Alan and what? You hear are so many takes of me doing things the wrong way. And that's just the nature of me here on sound speeds. I'm not a, a talent you normally put in front of a camera. But I'm a sound guy, and this is a sound channel, so you get what you get. Connector. Okay, let's start here. My name is Alan, and welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you by this microphone, this USB audio interface, and this connector. All in all, not even $20 spent. I don't know what the quality is going to be, but we're going to be seeing how well it does inside of my DAW. Okay, so that was the one that, was, that turned out pretty good. So I'm going to zoom in on this. And I'm going to go ahead and chop this. Hopefully that's the right button. No, let's try it there. No, none of the keyboard shortcuts I know are working. So let's go ahead and I guess select the audio for cut to use. Uh, that, that. People who know Audacity are probably freaking out and saying, Alan, how can you not know this? Um, maybe, no, that's envelope tool. Right click it, right click. None of the, <laughs> the keyboard shortcuts I know. Split, remove, what are you gonna do? Split, cut, uh-oh, what'd that do? Uh-oh, back up, back up, back up. Um, let's remove all of that. If I hit delete, and then if I go over here and hit paste, is that gonna put it? Okay, good. <laughs> All right, got lucky there. All I did was a split cut. And if you know how to do this better in the description below, please, by all means, leave some instructions for people to follow so that way they're not stumbling across and trying to do what I'm doing. Now that we've cut the area of sound that we're interested in editing, let's start by listening to it. My name is Alan and welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you by this microphone, this USB audio interface, and this 
connector. All in all, not even $20 spent. I don't know what the quality is going to be, but we're going to be seeing how well it does inside of my DAW. Okay. First thing I'm noticing is there's a high pitch whining still in there. Noise reduction can't catch everything and it obviously didn't. So I'm going to find my equalizer, which I'm assuming is under effect. There it is. And draw. I don't want to draw anything. Let's go to graphic EQ and see if that's going to be any better. And a lot of those kind of noises are around the 2.5K mark. So I'm going to try that first. And let's see if we go fairly narrow. All right, link the filter. I would have expected that to make it a little bit. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Oh, what are you doing? Let's go back down. You're going to be right. All right. Come on now. Zero yourself out. Flatten. <laughs> All right, let's try this from the beginning. Now I'm boosting it because I want to see if that enhances the bad noise. And if it does, then I can reduce that area and it will go away. But if I basically boost it and it's not doing anything, then I'm going to know right there that that was not the actual frequency range of that noise. So let's listen to it now. My name is Alan and welcome to this particular voiceover. So if I were to go back down, let's listen. My name is Alan and welcome to this particular. Okay, that high pitch ring sound was not there. Um, so if it's not there, it's got to be in a different frequency range. So let me trial and error here and figure it out. On a whim, I'm going to try something here. If I'm just going to listen to this last little bit where the digital noise is there, I'm going to try going here and doing noise reduction again, get profile and see if I can remove it from the entire file again. But just doing that one little bitty sound now. It changed something. All in all, not even $20 spent. Well, I don't hear it in that part anymore, but I definitely hear it over my audio. You buy this microphone, this USB audio interface, and this connect. Did it take enough of my sound to make me not really like it? I wonder now if there's a way for me to see visually what I'm listening to. Spectral. Spectrogram. There we go. So, <laughs> wow, that thing is noisy. What I'm going to do is, I wonder if it's possible to combine. Hmm, might be too difficult. Let's see if there's a way for me to dial in and edit spectrally. Because if you look right here, those horizontal lines are noisy. Those are noises right there. All those horizontal lines that go right through the middle of the track, those are just high pitch ringing noises that we don't need to hear. And I mean, if you hear them, it's not going to kill anything, but it's nothing you really want to hear. There's a 6K, a 4K, a 2K. So basically, it's like every 2K. There's even an 8. So I want to see if there's a way for me to delete all of those. Spectre Game Settings. Those look right. Can I edit spectrogram? We'll combine these two stereo tracks into one mono track. Resample, mix down, mix down. Is there a mix down to mono? There we go. Okay, so now we're mono. There were just the one audio because my voice was only one, one source. I don't need to have multiples. So if I were to look at those nasty horizontal lines right there, let me get rid of those. I wonder. Okay, let me try this. Spectrogram settings. We know that's around 8K. So if I'll look at 7500 and go up to 8500, okay, I may be getting somewhere. That is my entire horizontal line right there. Sorry for popping the microphone. Now, if I go out, that is showing me. That nasty line right there. Let's just let's just look at this whole thing. That entire horizontal line is where my nastiness is. So I want to see if I can highlight all of that using this. Now, because I don't have the ability to process it out in Audacity, at least as far as I know, I'm going to try to. What are my choices? I guess I'm just going to try to silence them. 
Sure. Oh, garbage. There we go. Okay, that worked. So what I did to get into that was I went down here to Spectral Edit Parametric EQ, and then I selected negative 24 dB in gain. So I'm gonna do that one more time. And that seemed to have taken out that one line. So now what I'm gonna do is go up here to Spectral Settings, do the exact same thing again, but this time I'm gonna grab the next selection of audio where, see this noise is right through here? And so I'm going to select, now this was a, a, a bigger selection, so it's going to probably sound worse. But I'm going to do a very bad thing and go ahead and adjust it and then listen to it after the fact, which you shouldn't really normally do. But special settings, that's exactly what I want to do. And so let's go over here and do my spectral parametric EQ. Sure. Okay, let's listen. Particular voiceover brought to you by... Hmm. I don't know, but it seemed to have taken out all that noise. So let's go down here to spectral settings. I'm going to drop down to three and four. Do this thing again. And we're going to grab that section. Okay, so this is a workaround because I don't have the exact tool that I would love to have if only I could afford a another DAW, but we're going to at least try to see what we can do with this free one. All right, let's remove that background noise. Just that one little line. Do it again. Uh, just to be safe. No, I'm going to do it a second time. Undo. Um, okay, so now let's go down to spectral again. One, two, and we're going to dial in on this frequency. Nope, 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 not there. Yes. Okay. And then effects, spectral EQ. Okay. So now if I were to look spectrally at, let's say zero is my minimum now, maximum is 2,500. There's still something right down here. That's around 0.5K. So why don't we look at maybe 8 point... Uh, so let's look at 800 hertz and below. Let's look at 800 hertz. I mean, that's minimum. Let's go to zero and let's do a search for 800. And we're going to look at this now. So you can see that line right there, that horizontal line. Come on. Again, work with me, not against me. And I'm going to grab that one little line there. And let's do effect parametric EQ, and let's hear, let's listen now. Welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you by this microphone. Okay, we got rid of all those bad little sounds there. Oh, that's actually pretty exciting. Okay, so let's go to, to let's go to 20 to 20 now, 20 to 20,000. So we got rid of all those background noises. Now, it looks like garbage, but the little high-pitched sounds are gone. <laughs> which is I'm going to take this uh, better. I'm going to take this over the little high pitch ringing sounds any day of the week. Ms. Allen, and welcome to this particular voiceover. Now, the overall fidelity of this microphone is bad to begin with. So let's see what, if we were to listen to it, what are we lacking? My name is Allen, and welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you by this microphone, this USB. First of all, it sounds like it's just centered around the mids. There's no real deep bass. There's no real rich highs. So I'm going to go over here to equalizer again. Uh, do I need to turn off spectral now? All right, let's go over here. Uh, let's go back to waveform. This particular... And we'll try a regular equalizer. Uh, audio select. Select audio. Oh, got to actually select the audio I want to use the equalizer on. Okay, well, that makes sense. Oh, let's flatten this thing and listen. My name is Alan and welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you by this microphone, this USB audio. Okay, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to try to see if I can increase the bass a little bit. I am going to draw this now. I'm going to drop the bass and see if I can increase it a little bit. Not nine. Jeez, that was too much. Maybe around three. Let's listen. My name is Alan and welcome to this particular... 
the fidelity of this microphone is just not good. My name is Alan and welcome to this particular voiceover. Okay, for right now, I'm gonna boost up a little bit around, let's say 3K and see what that does. My name is Alan and welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you by this. Hmm. I'm gonna actually step it up a little bit more in the air around maybe 6K. My name is Alan and welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you. That's not the air, is it? That's the air. I'm going to go up even higher. My name is Alan and welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you by this microphone, this USB audio. Okay. So the presence is <laughs> what I meant, not air. Uh, okay. Let's just try this. My name is Alan and welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you. You know, it's really weird. It sounds kind of like almost like a retro AM radio type sound. Um, okay. Let me listen to it one more time and see what I think we're missing. My name is Alan and welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you by this microphone, this USB audio interface. Oh, geez. Go back. <laughs> I don't need that. I'm going to try this and this. I mean, I don't really have an issue with lows right now, but I'm going to see if I can create a little more bass in my voice by playing with this. I see the little green line there. That's my curve. I'm going to try to see what I can do. My name is Alan and welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you by this microphone. I mean, I could probably go like this and it's not going to increase it enough. My name is Alan and welcome to this particular voice. There's really nothing there signal wise for it to boost, is there? My name is Alan and oh, welcome geez. to this particular voice. You hear all that rumbling now. All right, get rid of that. Roll that bad boy off. Actually, we don't even need that that much, do we? I didn't even look at my frequencies. I need to try to boost around, let's say, 80 up to around, let's say, around 150 for me. And let's listen now. My name is Alan, and welcome to this particular... Oh, my gosh. I gotta go deaf. Well, I guess I just did boost at 27 dB. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm trying so desperately to make it sound good that I'm just being drastic. My name is Alan and welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you by this. Okay. The low end may be about as good as I'm going to be able to get it. Um, and there's a bit of muddiness there. So I'm going to try to boost a little bit right through here just to see if I can get rid of that. My name is Alan and welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you. Hmm. I'm going to first try to fix the clarity. Round about right here, here, here. Bring that over. Let me try boosting right through here and let's see what we can come up with. My name is Alan and welcome to this particular. No. Way too harsh and drastic. Now, I, I, I know there's probably a lot of people watching this saying, you're going too fast and aggressive with it. You're right. But I want My to try name to is make Alan a change. And welcome to this particular voice. If I can make a change at all that I like, then I can dial in the level. But if I, if I hear it like increase really bad, then I can maybe boost that or, or, or cut that right there. My name is Alan and welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you. Now, now you're starting to really hear negative stuff. So let's try curving that around a little wider. My name is Alan and welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you by this microphone, this USB audio interface. Hmm. I don't know that I'll be able to get it much better than that, actually. If I boost a little earlier, what's going to happen? My name is Alan and welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you by this microphone. Stay with me for a second. My name is Alan and welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you by this microphone, this USB. You hear that it just has a sound to it. I mean, it just sounds cheap. I mean, that I'm not going to be able to equalize out and process out. All I can do is try to like tweak one garbage component to another garbage component and the little gap between how it kind of makes the sound. All I can do is try to make as good as possible out of that. And this is really choppy. It sounds terrible. My name is Alan and welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you by this microphone, this USB audio interface.
Hmm. All right, on a hunch, I'm going to try this, and then I'm going to just step away because I'm getting too much into processing, and I'm going to drive myself crazy with all this EQ. My name is Alan, and welcome to this particular voice. No, bring it back down. Okay. My name is Alan, and welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you. I'm going to actually lower some of that bass. It's, it's a little overwhelming. My name is Alan, and welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you by this microphone, this USB audio interface. Yeah. Oh, man. Bring that back up. I think. My name is Alan, and welcome to this particular voice. Okay. So I think that's probably about as good as I'm going to be able to get this file. My name is Alan, and welcome to this particular voiceover brought to you by this microphone, this USB audio interface, and this connector. All in all, not even $20 spent. I don't know what the quality is going to be, but we're going to be seeing how well it does inside of my DAW. So. What we were able to do is record the audio, then all the background noise that we had, we removed. Then we went in and spectrally deleted out or rather repaired or and dropped 24 dB on all the stuff that those horizontal lines of negative noise went through. And then we went through and played with the EQ just a little bit. And the reason I boosted the highs more is because my voice does have more highs, but the microphone wasn't picking them up as well. And I boosted the lows on the microphone, even though the microphone doesn't really pick up the lows. I boosted that up a little bit to try to see if it would kind of create a little bit of, of what, the, what wasn't really even there. Boosting it too much, though, made it really, really bad. And all it did was bring up a whole bunch of rumble that didn't need to be there. I just tweaked in, played a little bit with the EQ, and just listened to it. That's all I could really do. And hopefully, it's at least presentable enough for however I'm planning on on doing, you know, releasing my podcast or doing my game streaming. Now with game streaming, hopefully you are going to be uh, boosting up the background noises of your game or whatever, and it's going to cover up some of that. As for a podcast, obviously this is nowhere near the kind of quality you would want with any kind of a uh, voiceover. But if you're doing a podcast, maybe it's a retro, maybe, I mean, it, it, it's almost, it sounds almost like phone quality to me, like VOIP phone. So maybe that's good enough for a test on a podcast or something, but definitely save up and get a better system because let the truth be known, it's not going to ever be really good, but you can make as good as possible with audacity which is a free program i'll put the link down in the description for you to check it out but thanks for tuning tuning into this episode of sound speeds be sure to tune in the future for more interesting fun exploratory sound things and sound advice have a question you'd like answered or want to add something be sure to write it in the comment section down below you can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion again comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.